So hi, hello and welcome, Micro Hunter here. And today I received a question about uh, stereo microscopes and buying advice uh, for stereo microscopes. Now, most of my videos uh, in this uh, channel here are about compound microscopes, biological compound microscopes, but stereo microscopes also play a pretty important role here. And therefore I'm happy that I'm able to share this one question with you. It did take me a little bit of time to actually think of an answer, I have to admit, but I'll read the question to you first. So here we go. Recently, I got a contract by a client that has a huge collection of minerals and crystals from mines all over the country. And he wants me to take pictures of all of them for making an album and a catalog with all the samples. I'm talking about 2000 rocks, minerals and crystals. Now, most of them are just big quartz and pyrite crystals or rocks that I'm going to photograph with a macro lens and focus stacking. And I've done that many times in the past, but some of them are really, really small specimens and I will need a stereoscope, something like those used for bugs probably. By searching the internet for how to or what to buy, I stumbled across your channel. And let me tell you that you really do an amazing job there, but I will definitely need your help on getting the right piece of equipment at the right price. As of cameras, I do have a lot of DSLRs to connect, but I also do have a lot of cameras that are designed for telescopes, as it is my hobby, that are really great for microscopes also. I've used many of them with a friend's microscope with really great results. So as you get it now, my question is this, what kind or type or even specific model would you recommend for me to buy for doing this job with my client and what accessories would be suitable? Please do not forget that I do not want to overpay anything. I hope that my question is not too complicated. I know from photography that these questions most of the time are complicated and I really appreciate the job you're doing at your channel as you got me trapped in the microscopy world and now thinking about getting a small microscope for me and my daughter who is seven years old. Well, thank you for the question. And yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, this is a complicated question and uh, the reason why it's so complicated and difficult to answer is, is because the right microscope does not depend only on the specimen that you want to look at. So in this case, rocks or minerals. Okay. There, that is the problem uh, because there's so many other variables also involved. It's a little bit like asking which camera should I buy if I want to take pictures of my family or if I want to go on a holiday. Well, you can do that with a mobile phone camera as well, or you can do this with very expensive equipment because much uh, depends also on convenience. Um, yeah, also personal preference um, and some aspects are also a question of taste. Um, so for this reason, I cannot give you a simple model right now, but I can maybe direct you and help you to limit maybe the choice a little bit uh, by telling you at which parameters you should look out for. And this kind of uh, helps you to also, yeah, limit the selection a little bit. But first, let me tell you what my first instinctive, my first instinctive response was when I read your question. I already had an answer in my head and then I said, no, 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 <laughs> I think I better not uh, um, recommend it that way necessarily, but I'm gonna, gonna still share it with you. So my first instinctive response was, well, because you're a professional, you're a photographer, um, and because you're working for a client, earning money, um, doing professional work, for this reason, you need uh, yeah, a, an equipment that does not where you have very little compromise, okay? Um, and my suggestion, therefore, I thought I'm going to say this to you is, is as well, talk to a sales representative of one of the big four microscope companies, uh, no specific order, Olympus, Zeiss, Nikon, or Leica. And um, the reason is, is because they sell microscopes for research and um, yeah, for a target group that has very high quality expectations. And my recommendation would have been is, is basically contact them um, a sales representative who hopefully who knows a lot about microscopes uh, will then uh, yeah, be in communication with you. And then together you can discuss this and then together you can find a solution and maybe you can even be um, you're lucky enough that you're able to maybe try out a microscope or rent a microscope. So this was um, my first uh, initial idea until I checked uh, the web pages on how much those microscopes cost. And the price is well, several thousand euros. Um, so that's uh, the price tag. And, uh, and I said, well, hmm, the quality might be very good. Might but that might not be necessary because maybe you do not need the best quality. 
okay so i'm going to therefore also show you a couple of other options to you and my recommendation is is that you do not maybe do not make a final decision right at the beginning but that you try to gain experience by maybe buying some low cost microscope stereo microscopes models first which you try out first and then if they do not meet your needs then yeah get a better one uh, ultimately probably going to end up saving money this way than spending several thousand euros right at the beginning maybe you don't even want to spend so much anyway um, but i'm quite certain that maybe even at a lower price range uh, you might get the job done quite well so this is uh, my recommendation maybe um, get some hands-on experience so however what is one big advantage that those um, big brand companies what is one advantage that they have the big advantage is, is that they uh, not only sell your microscope but also a camera adapter um, and then you have a complete system that really works well um, now with the lower cost microscopes that you can get get these days um, what you need is is you somehow need to organize yourself a dslr camera adapter if you want to connect the dslr and i found out that well at least i was not happy with the image quality okay um, the reason is is that those adapters they also contain certain optics and they introduced aberrations so the contrast was quite low um, it was blurry i was not happy with the result okay um, and generally what I think is, is that from those high-end companies what they do is, is they design everything together so the optics um, of, the micro, uh, of the microscope and the optics of the adapter they work together sometimes they even compensate the lens errors yeah, so they go really at great lengths in getting the best image quality um, and this is something that you simply cannot get so easily if you've got the microscope from one company then you buy a cheap low-cost adapter from another company we are sure you're able to get it to work somehow but I found out that I got better results taking pictures with a mobile phone through the eyepiece than using my DSLR mounted over this generic adapter to a stereo microscope that's weird I mean the point is is I want to have a good image quality that's why I'm using a DSLR and now I'm getting a worse image quality because of the adapter you see that is a little bit the problem and and for this reason I um, I recommend that that maybe you still try it out uh, because maybe the image quality is still going to be good enough for you and maybe by doing some uh, picture editing you're able to actually get the contrast back um, so for your job it might be good enough but I cannot decide that um, whether you're going to be satisfied okay so now a couple of recommendations that I would like uh, to give uh, give to you um, generally um, when you get yourself a stereo microscope um, before doing that maybe uh, possibly consider getting a so-called industrial microscope now an industrial microscope um, is the following it has a so-called a c-mounted digital camera but it has some optics connected to it um, and then um, it is also able to work like a microscope with a difference that you can only connect the computer to it uh, and you cannot look through it so it's a little bit like a macro setup um, but maybe if you're able to get a, a magnification that goes beyond your current macro setup then you it might be okay for you okay so I do not know exactly what the highest magnification is of those industrial cameras but that is also something that you might want to try out now concerning stereo microscopes uh, they are two basic designs and that's a l could be a little bit important um, for your case the low cost design has uh, two different light paths one for each eye um, and two objectives yeah? so you look through it and then basically there's an objective on the left and on the right side looking at the specimen and uh, this is one design and the second design is called the common main objective or CMO design where there is one larger um, objective lens um, but you're uh, basically uh, the left and the right eyepiece they look through the same lens and you still get a stereoscopic view because this main objective is relatively large and therefore you still get this parallax offset which is important for a stereoscopic view now 
I think you have to be now a little bit, uh, and that's something that you have to try out now. If you use the, mo the, the cheaper design, where you have two separate um, objectives, smaller objectives, then you have to understand that when you take a picture, um, that the light pa from one of the objectives is redirected to the camera. And this is off axis. Okay, because uh, the two objectives are on the left and the right side, but the focusing axis is in the center. Okay, so it's lifted up and down like this. Um, and this basically means uh, that um, um, as you focus through your specimen, um, you're also changing the perspective a little bit. Um, and this might not play a big role when the, you do not want to stack over larger depths of field. Okay, but maybe if you want to stack over larger uh, yeah, distance, then the effect might be stronger that you might not get a very sharp image. Stacking software has to compensate now because this is horizontal shift um, in the image. Okay, and if your um, stacking software is not able to compensate this, uh, then but I think they should be able to compensate this. It's alignment. Uh, your stacking software has to be able to perform this image alignment first to be able to sh uh, to, to uh, calculate away this shift as you focus up and down, okay? With a common main objective, uh, you basically have uh, yeah, the camera mounted in, in, the in the same axis as, uh, yeah, as the objective and therefore this might not uh, make such a big difference. Um, however, those common main objective microscopes can be really expensive, okay? Um, so you might have to uh, also take uh, uh, this into consideration a little bit. So my general suggestion is, is, is that you maybe get yourself a, a low cost, uh, fairly reasonably low cost stereo microscope first and try to exploit that system and then see how far you're able to go with that. Now, concerning stereo microscopes, there are also different ways how it can be mounted on, on your table. There is one um, yeah, way is, is that you have a, a base plate and then there is a vertical yeah, boom, okay? Um, and in the vertical boom, this is where the, the microscope is, is connected, okay? Um, and uh, this is uh, pretty stable. Um, there is a second way of connecting stereo microscopes and that is, is over a horizontal beam, so to say. Yeah? So you mount it uh, to the table and then you have this horizontal beam and then you have uh, the microscope uh, to look through. This is used very often in electronics and it has the advantage that you now have the full table available for you. And also if you maybe want to uh, put some lamps there or so, there is uh, a lot of working space. However, I think it might have one problem and that is, is especially if you uh, connect now cameras like DSLRs that have a, a, a physical shutter, that there might be a shutter vibration. Okay, and especially also if you focus and refocus this, you might actually be moving the microscope um, and therefore you might not be able to easily focus through all of the levels of your specimen. So probably if you want to do focus stacking, you need a microscope that is very stable, okay? And, and not one um, yeah, which is mounted over a larger horizontal beam where you might have a problem with stability or maybe you bump against it and the whole thing shifts again and then you have to restart. Yeah? So this is also a recommendation. Now some microscopes, stereo microscopes, uh, they come with a lighting, light from the bottom, probably something that you don't, don't need, and also light from the top. However, um, get yourself, uh, in any case, uh, some external light source, like for example, a ring lamp, uh, LED ring lamp, this is something that is quite common, um, or some other external yeah, um, light sources that allow you to illuminate this, the, the rock from all, um, all angles. Okay, so this is also something that I would uh, recommend. Um, another thing is, is that if you, um, yeah, I have made some time ago a review video of one of my stereo microscopes. I'm not necessarily saying that I recommend it or not recommend it, um, but it is fairly com low cost, fairly low cost, around 400 euros I paid. Um, and it has a, a built-in um, zoom uh, ability. Um, optical zoom, yeah, so not all, not everyone's happy with that uh, because uh, you always reduce image quality when you include an optical zoom. Um, but it also allows you to connect so-called Barlow lenses, which also allow you to decrease and also increase the magnification. Uh, the increase in magnification is probably not so important here, but the decrease of magnification increases the depth of field significantly and also the working distance. So it's possible to attach uh, by screwing a small Barlow lens um, on the bottom to actually reduce the magnification as well. Also something that might be uh, might be in, 
interesting here. Yeah, so this is uh, basically the recommendations that I can give to you is, is maybe hmm, not to um, simply study the specifications of the microscopes too much and then make a decision based on that, uh, but maybe simply decide on one model fairly quickly and then try it out and send it back if you're not satisfied. Okay, I think this might be probably a better approach because it allows you to learn more and uh, to then make a better choice yourself. Okay, uh, because after all, if you want to stay in macro photography or micro photo, uh, uh, photo micrography, that's the correct way, um, then uh, you need the experience and you also need the know-how. And I think uh, you can now use this opportunity to build a little bit of know-how, which should also yeah, allow you to kind of develop your niche, uh, your photography niche a little bit better. Well, I don't know if uh, my video really was very useful in the sense that I did not give you a specific uh, microscope model recommendation, but uh, if you want to have a recommendation, if you do not want to have any compromises, then do contact, for example, the company Olympus, uh, go online, um, see what microscopes they have and uh, you request an offer or you find a microscope uh, model and then you uh, Google for that model and you try to buy it over, not directly from Olympus, but from another retailer. And then sometimes uh, they will even publish the prices online and you will discover that the cost is uh, fairly high. So, uh, but maybe that is worth it. Um, and I cannot decide that. Try industrial cameras. Um, if they magnify eno enough, um, try also, um, yeah, low cost introductory microscopes um, as well. Um, consider connecting a microscope camera, which you control over the computer. Um, if a DSLR, if you cannot find a DSLR adapter and find the system that uh, works best for you. Um, and uh, yeah, and then take it from there. Yeah, that's all I can say right now. I hope uh, it was still useful for you. I wish you all the best. Uh, happy microbe hunting as always and uh, see you around next time. Bye-bye.